Hey, what is going on guys and welcome to another signal processing tutorial. In today's video we're going to go over a simple example. Uh, so hopefully by the end of this, uh, if you haven't got a good grasp on the digital filters and, and how aspects of those work, uh, you should do. So this one's not going to be too hard, but uh, come along for the ride. So, our question today is to firstly determine our y of 2, our output value 2 samples from now, given previous inputs and outputs of the system, then we'll determine the frequency response of the digital filter, and lastly we'll test the filter's magnitude at a given omega value. So let's get started. For question A, determine y of 2. To calculate y of 2, we can start by simply substituting values in for our n value. For instance, we have x of 1 and we also have y of 0. So we can substitute these two values in to the system and calculate our y of 1. Therefore, y of 1 is equal to 1 quarter times x of 1, which is 40, plus 3 quarters times y of 1 minus 1, which is 0, which is also equal to 40. Okay, so working that one out, this one will cancel to 10, this one will cancel to 30, and then y of 1 is equal to 40. Nice and simple. Next, we have a calculation for x of 2, and we now have an equation for y of 1, so we can substitute n is equal to 2 into our original equation and calculate our y of 2. Doing that will give us y of 2 is equal to 1 quarter x of n, and remember n is 2, so that's 20, plus 3 quarters y of 2 minus 1, which is just y of 1, which we know is 40. Just like before, we can cancel this. This will be 5, and this one will be 30. Therefore, y of 2 is equal to 35. And that's it. That's part A done. So let's just delete that so we've got some space. Now let's move on to question B. Let's calculate H of Z, our frequency response of our given filter. For this, we can use our inverse Z transform, which is the same as the one we've used in the past, where A of X of N minus B becomes X of Z multiplied by A times by Z to the power of negative B. We can make that same transformation here and calculate our Y of Z. After we have y of z and x of z, we can rearrange this to calculate our h of z. So, making the substitution, there's an a value of 1 and there's a b value of 0 here, minus 0. So that will become y of z. And that will be equal to, our quarter will be our a value, 1 quarter, times x of n. Again, our b value is 0, so that just becomes x of z, plus 3 quarters y, and then again our b value is just negative 1, which will become z, then z to the power of negative 1. Okay, so we have an equation for y of z and x of z. Let's bring all of our y of z terms to the left hand side. That will be y of z minus, because we'd subtract this from both sides, 3 quarters y of z times z to the power of negative 1 is equal to 1 quarter x of z. So here we can bring our y of z out the front of our equation and that will give us y of z 1 minus 3 quarters z to the power of negative 1. And that's all equal to 1 quarter times x of z. Okay, so now we can simply divide both sides by x of z and the coefficient on our y of z term which will give us y of z dividing through by 1 minus 3 quarters z to the power of negative 1 will cancel and we'll be dividing by x of z as well and then that will be equal to our original quarter so let's do 1 divided by 4 and then that's also divided by 1 minus 3 quarters times z to the power of negative 1. So that will be 1 minus 3 quarters 
times z to the power of negative 1. Okay, so we have our h of z. Let's just expand the brackets here and collect our like terms. That will give us, remember that y of z divided by x of z is h of z, our frequency response. Therefore, our h of z is equal to 1 divided by, now let's expand these brackets, 4 multiplied by 1 will give us 4, minus 3 quarters multiplied by 4 will give us 3 times z to the power of negative 1. And there we have it, we've calculated b. That is our frequency response of our filter. Okay, so let's just clear this, but we'll still keep our h of z just so we can answer our next part of the question. Okay, so now we're going to determine the magnitude of the filter at omega equals one third omega s. So, how can we do that? Well, we can do that by making the substitution and calculating h of e to the j omega t. So, how do we make this substitution into our previous example? Well, before we do that, we need to do a little bit of calculations. Firstly, we need to remember that t, our sampling period, is equal to 2 pi divided by the sampling frequency ws. So, now we can continue. Our h of e to the j omega t will become 1 divided by 4 minus 3 and then that's multiplied by e to the negative j omega but where our omega is 1 third omega s 1 third and our t is 2 pi on omega s so our omega s and our omega s will cancel leaving us by 2 pi okay so then we can use this substitution e to the negative j omega is equal to cosine of negative omega plus j sine of negative omega. Okay, so let's make this substitution now. We'll still have 1 divided by 4 minus 3, and then inside the brackets we'll make the substitution. However, in this case, our omega value is equal to 2 thirds pi. That will give us cosine of 2 thirds pi, remember there's that negative as well, plus j times sine of negative 2 thirds pi. Okay, so from here you can calculate the cosine and the sine value uh, and then you can expand this out and calculate the magnitude of it, however there's a simpler way uh, if you have any sort of graphics calculator, they can easily calculate the magnitude of a function. Uh, so we're going to do that here. And just plugging that one in, we get a magnitude of approximately 1 on the square root of 37. If I've made a mistake there, feel free to let me know with a comment down below. So this means that a signal that is entering our system at approximately one-thirds of our sampling rate, so if we had a sampling rate of 30 kilohertz and our input signal was 10 kilohertz, the 10 kHz signal would be attenuated at 0.16 approximately times the input value that it came in as. Okay guys, so that is all for today. Hopefully you're getting a good grasp of how these Y's and X's and previous samples and previous outputs all work with each other. Uh, after you get the hang of it, it's really easy. But it's good that you know this before we move on. Okay, so that covers pretty much all of the filtering work that we're going to do in this playlist. In the next couple of videos, we're going to start exploring additional DSP tools such as correlation, convolution, and many other things like that. So hopefully you'll stick around for that. As always, guys, thanks for watching. If you had any problems with this video or if you noticed any mistakes, feel free to let me know with a comment down below and I'll get back to you. And I'll see you guys in the next one.